the only person I have heard from is Amy. She's unable to, to join the meeting. Hi, Jen. Hi, how are you guys? Doing well, how are you doing? Howdy, Scott. Hey, wow, I gotta I gotta turn that down. Good lord. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna count to five or something so I can see if I've got One, it turned down. Two, three, four, five. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, no I problem. really had it up loud and clear. <laughs> Hello, Dave. Hello, Andy. Hey. Good evening. Good hey, evening. Folks. Hello, Austin. Hello, Marie. There we go. Bryn. Hello, Bryn. Bryn, did you make it by the library to pick up your packet? I did, yes. Oh, good, good. Hello, Helene. I knock these stupid earbuds out about 10 times every meeting. <laughs> Everybody here? I can't see everybody here. Everybody is here. Oh, okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Hey. Okay. You ready? Ready. Okay. So it's 701. Um, Chair Guy Mason? Present. Vice Chair Scott Gilbert? Present. Bryn Zani? Present. Colleen Federici? Present. Sarah Harkness? Here. Marie Hoda? Here. Austin Stryker? Present. Andy Sakaris? Here. Yes, City Council Member Dave Cuesta? Present. And Inglewood School Liaison Jen Hubbard? Here. Excused, we have Amy Wilson. And staff, we have Director Christina Underhill. Here. And Library and Cultural Arts. Manager Mark Mollis. Here. All right. Thank you. Great. All right. Do we have any questions about the uh, minutes? Where are the minutes? Here. 
conversación. Everything looks good to me. Move to approve. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Gets are approved. Next is the statistical report. Okay. All right, so um, this is the first one uh, from our 2021 statistical report. So it will look slightly different than uh, some of the months past. Um, so we, just to run through real quick, um, changes that we made to this statistical report based on your feedback were that we uh, separated out page views. Uh, the website and catalog page views are now uh, listed separately. Um, and we also added um, the Facebook. We're using total reach as a single metric uh, to just kind of measure Facebook activity. Um, that, that's going to be less meaningful as a um, number unto itself than it will be just in the context of change over time. Um, total reach is an odd metric, but it was the one that seemed to be most uh, all encompassing. It, it's basically anytime somebody sees your post, but if so, somebody shares your post, then everyone who sees the post that they share will add to your total reach. If you do a paid promotion, it'll add to that. So um, we can start running through some of these numbers here. Um, physical visitors is a reflection of combination of curbside and the last week of the month, we were open to the public. So we have a little bit there, but it was less than 100 people that first week total. It's been picking up since. Um, web website page views, you can see, are about half of what they were last year at this time. Um, we've talked about that in months past. Catalog page views, a little less affected because, you know, that you're going to get different, uh, you're, you're going to get a, uh, a page view each time somebody's navigating, I, I believe, the catalog. Um, so that's, that's that usage overview section, moving down to the circulation section, um, rearrange this a little bit and really thought it would be helpful to split out, um, those digital, uh, formats. Um, previously we were reporting those numbers in aggregate. Um, and now we're going to start trying to report those out separately. Um, and I think that will give us a clearer picture over time of what which of our digital services are really driving usage and which ones are kind of withering on the vine a bit. Um, we'll still, you know, show those numbers in a total. Um, so we've got our overdrive and Hoopla numbers there. You can see um, the overdrive numbers are up considerably from the last year. Hoopla numbers are up a little bit. Um, Canopy doing a lot better than it was last year at this time. That's, of course, the movie, like documentary, film, and TV streaming service. Um, Access 360 still not really doing much. Access 360 is a very similar service to Overdrive, and obviously it gets just a, a fraction of the usage. And we've really shifted our purchasing away from uh, Access 360. Um, the only thing we're really purchasing there anymore, I think I might have mentioned this before, is young adult materials and um, juvenile materials because um, it, there was an arrangement with the Inglewood schools. Um, so digital circulation, total circulation is up over last year when you uh, combine all those numbers, and that's largely thanks to the success of Overdrive. Um, total circulation still a little, little over 50% of where we'd be normally, and I'm hoping to see that number start to creep back up and get closer to where we were previously in the coming months. And of course the goal would be by the end of the year to re have reestablished normalcy compared to baseline. Obviously in the coming months, I think we'll start to see the year to date comparisons or sorry, the month, uh, the year over year comparisons, um, you know, are gonna, are gonna look good because we're gonna start seeing the pandemic numbers in the next couple of months here. Um, Information services section hasn't changed. That's just questions answered and in, uh, computer usage. Of course, both of those aren't very high because we're, you know, we're still not operating normally. Um, volunteer hours is pretty high because um, of our ELL tutors. Uh, we've maintained um, a lot of activity with ELL tutoring sessions. Um, so these are uh, tutors who work with library staff to set up one-on-one -on -one appointments. Um, mostly they're, they're doing their uh, meetings uh, virtually with their students. 
Um, and actually, L Michelle Branstad, or one of our librarians, is um, because our ELL tutors are not particularly tech savvy themselves. It, uh, she's um, she's setting those Zoom meetings up. And basically every time they do one, she's logging on to facility because she's getting it started and then going back about her work. So she's been very active in that. And I wanted to give her credit for, for that work. Um, but that, that's, that's where most of the volunteer numbers are coming from. Um, programs, we didn't change much, except we added at the bottom an aggregate total, uh, just a combined number of all programs. Um, Debbie requested that, so that's, that's why that's there. Um, our children's programs, um, little, not, not as many uh, as we had had in January. We've had a pretty busy um, December, and I know that they're doing, um, they're still maintaining some of their virtual stuff, but they're taking a little bit of uh, a, a break to get prepared for the coming months. Um, and they're, they're starting their summer reading planning now. Um, and then, let's see. Yeah, so the numbers I think from there are pretty self-explanatory. Any questions about any of that? Do you like this new format? Will this work? I like it. I really like the new um, parsing out of the numbers. Thank you for that. I'm not yep. sure what I know from it, but I feel like there's information there. There's something I, there. Even though yeah. the total reach for Facebook is like a weird number, I think it'll function to show a trend. That's what I, that was my thought exactly. I was looking at the numbers that Facebook was making visible to us, um, you know, total page views, total likes, and it just, none of them seemed to really offer unto itself the, the, the whole picture. I'm not sure this does either because, you know, it's possible to juice the total reach number with, pay, for example, paid promotions. You can get, you know, thousands of additional quote unquote reaches, um, but, we know, but I don't really think that that's going to be a problem for this number because I don't think we're going to be in the position of abusing that. We did do a little bit of um, a couple of our uh, posts this month in January. We did do uh, paid promotions on um, Guy recommended, and thanks for mentioning it, Guy, uh, when we did the homeschool survey, and that was a that was a very insightful one for me because I think we did. Um, I think the reach on that was like 800 people or something, a pretty impressive number. And then we got, we're not even sure we got any additional responses as a result of doing that. Um, Cause the response rate was pretty low on that survey and where we got the responses from, we didn't think it was from uh, new users on Facebook. So um, something we'll, we'll keep experimenting with when the opportunity arises, it seems like the moment's right, but that was something we're, I don't think we'll be doing too, too often. Doesn't sound like it was that helpful. <laughs> no, it's, but you know, it was a great idea. It was worth a try. So I really appreciate you reaching out about it. Okay, good. Cool. And then um, this will be, uh, sorry, I guess it's, well, action, am I waiting on you, Guy? I'm trying to remember. Oh, just act, action plan. That's all I get to say. All right. All right. <laughs> Um, so I appreciated the feedback that you all gave last month about the action plan. Um, and, and Andy, in particular, you mentioned wanting to see SMART goals. Um, so, you know, I know there was real interest in seeing more um, things that were a little bit more specific, um, things that were a little bit more um, uh, measurable and time oriented. Um, so and I really gave that a lot of thought. Um, and, and with the action plan, there's a there's a balance to be struck. You know, I I I I think there is real value in having uh, the specificity of you know having concrete, measurable goals. Um, measurable is kind of a weird one for us with, with a lot of the goals that make sense in the context of the action plan, because what what I think of as measurable is really just the binary of like, did we do the thing that we said we were going to do? It's it's a yes or no. Um, you know, there's possibility. Um, in the future of looking at things like increased circulation by 20%, that sort of thing. It didn't really seem to make sense given the kind of goals that we were prioritizing for this year. Um, but it's something I certainly will keep in mind in the future. But I did want to make the goals more specific in response to that feedback. Um, and, and also to provide some guidance around when in the year you could expect to see something. So, so as we proceed through this, you'll probably see some things where we identify this is something we'll do throughout the year. Some things we'll identify as we're planning to do this in the early part of the year. 
and some things that we're really planning to do later in the year when, you know, knock on wood, God willing, we'll, we'll start to see a little bit more normalcy restored. Um, so I appreciated that. This, that, you know, definitely curious to, uh, to get your thoughts. Um, but I think we'll start running through this. So of course, the primary goal here in the general section is to restore library services. Um, and, and we took a big step towards that by reopening to the public on January 25th. Um, really, like I said, a very positive response from all of our patrons. The, the, the best day was probably the week after we opened on Monday, we sent out the email newsletter to all of our users, letting people know that we were open. Um, still very limited capacity, limited hours, but we had that next morning a lineup of people at the door who were basically just like kicking their heels. They were so happy when they when we let them inside. So that was a very good feeling. Um, seeing our, our you know patrons who had just become aware that we were going to be reopening and they showed up to be there <laughs> the moment that we did. So that meant a lot. Um, we're seeing numbers uh, increase each day. Um, uh, well, not not every day at this point, but week over week, we're we're seeing steady increase in usage. Um, People are back in checking out books, holds, uh, browsing the library. We're seeing families in the library again, which feels wonderful. Um, so yeah, that's been that's been a really positive thing. And obviously, in the coming months, we'll um, look at expanding capacity and expanding hours um, as it makes sense and as it, uh, kind of in pace with the demand um, and, and in pace with public health guidance. And of course. Uh, like everybody else in the metro area got thrown for another curveball this week when the state moved us all to yellow on the COVID dial. Um, so we're kind of figuring out what to do, what to do with that most recent change. Um, you will probably see um, uh, next month or in the coming weeks, um, we're planning to do um, community in the community room on the second floor uh, in-person story times again. So that will be a huge, huge step and we're really excited about that. Um, I know marketing and uh, promotion of the library is very important to this group. Um, it's really important to us as well. And it's a challenging thing to figure out how to do with the staffing levels and the, and the, and the staffing capacity that we have. Um, you know, it's something that we have to kind of slip in alongside of our regular jobs each day. So I wanted to formalize it a little bit. Um, so we did, uh, we are, we did put together a marketing team. We identified some of our part-time staff members who already have certain responsibilities related to marketing and some of our full-time staff members who had a little bit of capacity uh, to help out with that. Um, so this team will meet monthly um, and uh, we're going to be, you know, uh, experimenting with different things that we can do to kind of continue to promote the library services. Um, so we'll keep you up to date each month on the work of that team and then anything related to that in terms of uh, local outreach and partnerships. Um, we talked about the new website previously. Um, I did get uh, the first training on the new CMS. Um, and I'm really excited about the way there has been particularly the, the events calendar, I think is going to be really, really helpful for us. Um, and I know, um, I think it was Helene had asked for access um, when possible to that website. And, and Helene, I, I, I did email our communications department. I think they are comfortable with that. Let me just confirm. And, and if it's okay, I'll email you the link. And was there anybody else who would like to have that link to, to kind of take a look at the website early? I would. I see Scott. I would. Yeah, I can. For only just, I can only see one person at a time. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on my I, I, was, I was muted. I'd like to see it too, if All I right. could. Maybe I'll send it to Debbie and she can send it out to the group. Would that be? Perfect. And then you can look at it if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, good. It's not hugely different. I mean, it's a, it's, I, I, I'm thinking of it more as a reskin on the current city of Englewood website. And it'll mostly have an impact on the library later in the year when we get a microsite, which will change the navigational structure more meaningfully. But internally, we're definitely using this as an opportunity to kind of revisit the site, you know, to, you know, refresh the pages and, and really to try to make sure that we're keeping it uh, current with the events calendar. That, that calendar will probably be the biggest single change for us. I have a question about um, the website. So you, you had a former version of the website. And then if I remember correctly, um, you had put up like a, almost like a temporary website or like was it yeah. like a fix? 
it was it was um gosh what was it called it wasn't wix it was Where? weebly okay and okay. so what that was yeah so that was a project that had been started by library staff before i came on board um and uh they had spent some time working on it i when i came in i, I helped to try to flesh it out a little bit um we spent a few weeks putting that together um and i presented it to this group around the same time that the city became serious about redoing its website um, and, and these things happen sort of simultaneously and without without you know, anyone, anyone really thinking the, the intersection of these two efforts through. Um, and again, this is something that I kind of inherited. And, um, you know, the, with the Weebly site, I thought the layout was strong. I thought that the, the editor that it had was fairly frustratingly limited, but it was something we could work with. But ultimately, um, the customer support was non-existent and we were having technical issues, um, including not being able to assign new staff as editors on that website. And they, people weren't able to uh, log in. Um, we had to like, we ended up having to use shared logins and, and like, and we were reaching out to their customer support team and getting absolutely no response. Um, and as we were running into those frustrations, and simultaneously, I was working with our communications team and talking about the, the city of Englewood's website, which we knew would have support from a, from a web developer and be accountable to the city itself. It just really didn't make sense to me to, to move in that direction. And so the Weebly site, we, we still have it. It will be kind of um, something that we will, when we're working with uh, Granicus, the city's web developer, we'll be able to show them kind of what we had as a vision. Um, but I just really wasn't comfortable with that site. I mean, it, it didn't even have, um, it didn't even have version control. There is no way if somebody made uh, destructive edits to the site that we would be able to get restore it to a previous state. And so there was just, I, I really didn't feel comfortable with some of those, you know, just the, some of its technical limitations and the lack of customer support. So is the plan um, to uh, launch the new, the library's uh, section of the new city website and then immediately retire the Weebly site. The Weebly site's not active at all. Oh, it's already retired. Yeah. Okay, got we, it. We never, got we it. never launched it to the public. It was previewed oh, to I this see. group. Yeah, it was previewed to this group, but never launched to the public. Okay, got it. Yeah, thank yeah, you. It, it, yeah, the timeline was kind of, kind of weird there, but thank you for asking about it. Um, this is something that you didn't see in the previous. So um, when I when we showed an action plan last month, um, I, as we've been working through the last few weeks, I realized that this is something that we really need to call out in the action plan, which is launching new services for patrons experiencing homelessness and economic need. Um, this is a huge user group for us, um, and it's one that I, I think really the library staff all, all think about a lot, and we really give a lot of. Um, Put a lot of effort and, and into providing good services and this is something that the city of Englewood has prioritized through its um, homelessness working group. Uh, I think the city manager's office has really done a great job of showing leadership on, on this issue um, and so this is something the library is looking for ways to um, support patrons experiencing homelessness and economic need. Um, so in January for example um, we acquired blankets and tarps from Wellspring Church and so we have those on hand now as well as um, hygiene kits um, and some limited clothing um, to um, distribute and like if there's a cold weather event, you know, people will come to us and basically look, they'll be looking for shelter for the evening. Um, and so, you know, if they show up early in the day, we can usually put them in touch with um, groups in the, or, or uh, nonprofits in the area that could provide that sort of shelter. But sometimes they show up in its closing time and those places have all filled up for the night. Um, so it's good to have something that we could give them. Um, and, and, and so the city has provided um, uh, uh, some information about uh, how to navigate some of the various social services available in the area. Um, we have some of that information internally, some contacts that we know internally. Um, and we're, we have a lot of new staff, new staff. So we've been actively training them on how to navigate those services. Um, and this is something that uh, has kind of been on the back burner for the last few months when we didn't have people in the library. But now that we have people in the library again, we're really starting to see this. Um, we're really, and we really want to be able to meet this need. Um, 
And like I said, we, or, and, and as we say here, we met with Inglewood Police Department to discuss the role of dispatch and co-responders. We did have a, a, a couple of interactions this month where co-responders showed up to, to assist people who were dealing with um, uh, various, you know, uh, it was during the cold weather event. This was specifically around the need for, uh, have for uh, shelter for the evening. Um, and then, um, but often this, what, what happens is we need the, we need um, dispatch and, and the co-responders to show up when somebody's having a mental health crisis um, or substance abuse crisis. Um, so that's something we're trying to continue or always trying to get better at. And I really feel like um, we're moving in the right direction with that stuff. And, when I, 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 and I think that really stems from city leadership. So. Um, real quick, Debbie, if you just stop, even though we're um, scrolling, scrolling past some of these, we don't have updates, but I did want to show that um, we're focusing on new services for homebound patrons. That's something that's a high priority for us. And we think we can do an early part of the year. Uh, we would mentioned the AV recording studio. I, I do think that one's going to be more of a mid to late 2021 thing, just because even if we had it all ready to go today, we wouldn't be able to let people, you know, I mean, we wouldn't be able to let people used in closed spaces. Right now, we're, uh, our focus is definitely going to be on restoring essential services. Um, and then this is something that as uh, public health guidance eases and as our concerns about lack of, uh, about our unventilated spaces eases, we'll be able to start doing stuff like this again. Um, we're not currently, even though we're open, letting people use our study rooms uh, just because we don't have adequate ventilation in them. Um, access to local history materials is something that's important to us. Um, the, we uh, have a Colorado history collection that has kind of always been uh, just sort of a subset of our general nonfiction collection and staff this month uh, were able to recode those in the catalog to be searchable as a standalone category. Um, and they were relabeled so that we don't accidentally re-enter file those. Um, and I, I know we also have a couple of projects that are starting internally around our historic archive of materials, figuring out ways to get those out to the uh, visible to the public um, and to make those collections uh, searchable to the public so that people could find out what we have in the historic archive. Um, and then in each category, you'll see this make other improvements to this is meant to be sort of a catch all a lot of the times uh, we do stuff around the library that doesn't fit into one of the uh, other action plan categories. Um, and so in, in, in thinking about the feedback that you all provided about making sure that we we're uh, showing smart goals uh, for the action plan I, I wanted to still have the flexibility of having a space to report, you know, the achievements that we're doing that are, aren't specified elsewhere. Um, a lot of the work that we do is about pursuing the opportunities that arise over the course of the year. Um, so, you know, here we talk about um, made significant changes to our new fiction and nonfiction display areas in the magazines. So when you come in the library, you'll definitely see some some rearrangement that happened. You'll see a lot of new displays um, and you'll see some new collection items like the binge boxes that we added. Do you have an example yep. of a themed DVD set? That's in your oh page. yeah, like westerns um, or sci-fi. They, they it's it's a, so it's Baker and Taylor, the publisher that we work with. I think it is that that puts these together, and um, uh, they um, yeah, I'll, I that's the the westerns is the one that jumps out at me. And so it'll be like ten different DVDs, um, and you know it it's something that I'm you know we'll see if it takes off. I'm not I'm not sure, but we 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 bought a handful of them and we'll just see how they do. Um, children's services, some of the action plan items here launching the teen space, we've talked about it previously. That one's on hold right now because the library, um, we're working with our facilities department, we're probably going to have uh, a big repainting of the library um, that we brought out a bunch of contractors to, to get us some quotes. Um, and the teen space is one that we think will really benefit from repainting, but we've got the furniture and stuff ready to be set up. But at this point, we're kind of like, all right, we're not allowed to have anybody in here yet anyway. Let's just wait and go ahead and get it painted first and then we'll get it set up. Um, so hopefully we'll know a timeline on getting the library repainted in the next month. Um, and then improving services to homeschooling families, um, is a priority we've talked about a lot. Um, and the children's team, as I alluded to earlier, sent out a survey to families who had indicated their homeschooling. Um, it was shared via the monthly newsletter and Facebook. Um, we, we got uh, just a couple of dozen responses, not, not a huge response on that one. Um, but our children's staff really felt that that was still valuable. 
um, and they um, wrote up a pretty detailed report on uh, what they learned from that and what their next steps are. And so you'll definitely be seeing more on this in the coming months. Okay. I, uh, there's been something I've been seeing a lot in the news and uh, other um, discussions and I thought, I know there's a, there's a lot on our action plan now and I'm thinking maybe it'll be something we can add on to it. And that's around um, like encouraging critical thinking and media literacy. And there's, there's actually a bill that's in, in our state Congress right now to, to bring that to the schools to really improve the um, kind of media literacy and being able to spot fake news and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah. ask questions. And I'm wondering if that's something we can also help the community with um, through the library. What do you have in mind? Um, well, I know uh, for, for kids, uh, there's, there's a kind of whole program where you can ask certain questions to when they're reading books. So the kids think about what they're, you know, listening to and, and um, uh, you know, just think about the, what they're what they're reading. Yeah. Um, I know that there's going to be some educational programs. Or there have been some around media literacy and websites and stuff. So I, I think it's just it's kind of all over the place right now, and there's not really a really yeah. solid curriculum. It sounds like, but um, so I, I think actually that action plan is good because it's kind of general general goal. <laughs> right. to, this would be a good one that would fit in. Yeah, for something like that. You know, it's funny, I, I, last time I remember this coming up was um, in early 2017. So after the 2016 elections, when of course fake news was this massive topic. Um, and um, we, we, talked about, we talked about media literacy and information literacy um, at the time. And um, I remember Dorothy pushing back that there was no way to do that without being political. Um, and, and I think that is that is the nature of the challenge on that is that it, it, it does tread into some uncomfortable territory. Um, but I think that there's um, definitely an overlap between the values of information literacy and of course the values that we promote as, as a library. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's something where if the right opportunity were there, I'd pursue it, absolutely. Um, but I, I, it's, it's something that I, uh, my background is in media studies and, and I've really read and thought a lot about this problem over the years and it's a nut, it's a nut that I have not personally cracked um, and if anyone is aware of something out there um, feel free to send it along I think we'd be very interested um, doing programming around that or, or providing resources around that um, some I know I saw uh, sort of a, a a university that put together um, sort of a web, web website that would not quite a quiz, a little more formal than that, but basically just can you spot the, you know, what makes this story questionable sort of thing. It might be worth at least sharing that with our users. Yeah, I, so I, I think without really clear um, kind of curriculum and stuff, it's, it's going to be hard to implement now. But I mean, it looks like the state's trying to do something. And uh, I know of some other programs where, where um, you know, just it's not telling you what to think. It's It's just asking people to think, you know, so yeah, yeah. So it's not political at all, I think, um, when you, you know, approach it that way. Um, Mark, there's an institute for um, teaching children philosophy, and they put out book recommendations uh, on their website, I can send it to you. Um, but I think that that's a really great, like, broad way of increasing uh, critical thinking skills is by honing in more on philosophy content for kids. And then also, um, which by the way too, is a whole subset in the program that I'm in right now in cognitive science at Johns Hopkins. They're, um, they're really going totally off on teaching kids philosophy, which I love. It's like a weird niche, but it, there's a lot of uh, research that supports it. So. Um, it's, I think it's growing and the Institute for Teaching Kids Philosophy has, has a really good uh, book list recommendation. So maybe we could just acquire those books and even something like, you know, feature them one month or something like that. Yeah. And then the other thing about misinformation that might be a, a good approach is looking at um, 
what is what are good sources for research? So like primary sources, um, quality sources versus just like any, uh, like maybe like a um, what you would almost expect at like high school or college level, but like pared down even more simply, like, is this a good source or isn't this a good source? So it's more about mm -hmm. just like not the actual content itself, but the source of the content. Yeah. Um, and that's, of course, something that when we do outreach to schools and we show them the research databases that we have, it's something that we try to work with, usually with school librarians to, to provide access and to provide, provide information about. Um, and of course, it's something that comes up when we're interacting with anybody who comes in with information needs that we're trying to help them to understand the difference between high quality and low quality information sources. Um, but that, you know, there's always work to be done on that. And it's something that I can tell you is very dear to the hearts of many of my staff members who, you know, give a lot of thought to this sort of thing. But um, uh, please send me that if you if you wouldn't mind. The, was it is it the Montclair State University one? I just did a quick Google. To try it to is see the Montclair okay. State University. They really, um, the leader of that program really has pioneered the, the work, but it's mm -hmm. taken off now at many different institutes of education and cognitive sciences are exploring. It's a whole niche now in okay. uh, learning theory is introduced yeah. to philosophy and I'm all for it. You know, it's like one of my passions actually. So um, yeah. I'm happy to share that. And they have really great book recommendations and I have not published, but I've actually written a couple of philosophy books for kids that I hope to publish one day. And so- That's cool. Yeah, like I'm really- You could definitely come it. present them at the library. I don't know if that's a conflict of interest. <laughs> I don't know either. I mean, I would love to. It's, it's a passion project that I have no time for. So there's no conflict there really. <laughs> right, <laughs> fair enough. That's cool though. Yeah, I, I'd love to learn more. So that, like, please send, send along what you have. We could exchange emails maybe. I have two uh, quick know. questions and comments on this. Okay. Um, sure. Sorry to, to be always pushing. Um, one. Is there a way we could get stuff that you would like us to review and put some time and effort into before the day of the meetings? For those who, like, I think we got it this morning. So um, if there's stuff yeah, you that you try to process. Yeah. Yeah, I usually try to get these a little earlier. Sorry, this one, the last, this one came in hot in particular. I mean, Not a problem, I get it, yeah. no, I get it. Yeah. Um, I just want, if you're looking for our brain on it, I just want to make sure I'm making enough time. Um, yeah, sorry about that, Andy. I'll, oh, I'll no, it happens. I yeah. I, I get it, no, 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 no harm, no foul. Um, I heard you, yeah. The only thing I would think of is um, on this, and I, I, am, I, fully, I appreciate the effort that's gone into this, thank you, um, first off. But I think just some of the stuff please lean on some of the members for some of the, the board members that can be helpful around, especially marketing and, and website and some of those things. Um, I've tried to build programs by myself and not really know what I was doing. Um, and I think some of the members could help a shorten the runway and also provide some feedback. And I know I would be happy to help with website and marketing and some of those things if your team wants. I know there's other folks that are probably well more versed than I am, um, but you know, for some of the like, well, we're trying and we are not 100% sure. Um, I love that. But also, I don't want us to like six months down the road, we're like, we still don't know what's going on. Um, so I think from that standpoint, um, it may be helpful. And I don't know how we would provide feedback of like, what we could be helpful to the staff on or where our areas of expertise are. Um, so the staff can reach out or you can connect us. I don't know how that sort of interconnection works being a relatively new board member. Yeah, that's that's sort of a different territory than we usually are in with the library board um, as far as my, my background with it goes. Um, Christina, can you weigh in on how that might work or what, what, the, what where we draw those distinctions? Yeah, one of the challenges is the, you know, keeping the boards out of the weeds or the commissions out of the weeds, but we want your feedback too. So if you're looking at this action plan, you have some really good ideas on how we can manipulate it to, uh, Mark and I discussed, you know, like smart goals and making the action plan smart goals. And we really struggle to get that because we were finding that's more statistically based versus, hey, we're doing something almost every day that goes towards these action plans. And so, um, again, we're looking to you all for uh, just feedback and we want to make the library a great place. And I agree, Andy, I mean, our staff have been doing a really good job navigating these times and 
Um, not that they're rusty, but they just reopened two weeks ago. So they're just getting back into the real swing of things. So I'm, I'm hoping from, uh, you know, I, I'm expecting really good things over this next year, but you know, you can always reach out. Um, the goal will be to send this out probably a week in advance or the week prior to the meeting. So you can review this prior to the meeting and reach out to Mark or myself and say, Hey, what about this? And that gives us a little time to make updates. Um, or pull it and say, hey, let's do a little presentation on this. One thing Mark and I talked about too is possibly inviting uh, some of the supervisors, librarians to these meetings, maybe one at a time we'd have children's and then adult services come and they can talk to you about what they've been working on more specifically, what their SMART goals are that they've been trying to accomplish throughout the year and give you those updates. So you feel more connected. Um, Mark does a good job, I believe, but um, hearing it from that front line that's doing these services every single day will give you a little bit more insight. And then going forward as we are reopened fully, um, I think we can make adjustments as we go. Keep the action plan as it is, but add to it and make it more robust. Yeah, and then and then when it comes to like things like uh, Andy was suggesting there, where you know we bring uh, board members in on say marketing plans and that sort of thing. I mean, what how, what's your feedback on that? I would say, give us your feedback during this meeting. This is where you can give us your ideas. Like, hey, I really think you should do more boost on Facebook. I believe you did that at the end of last year when we had a little extra money to spend. And that was that was good because we're, a lot of times we're stuck in the weeds and we're not thinking outside of that, that bigger picture there. And we're just trying to do day by day things. So um, yeah, I would say bring ideas to these meetings and share those. And if if we see, you know, like the, the um, recording studio, if we have members that like are really great at this, we might say, hey, can you stop in the library and just give us some feedback? So there may be some times we may wanna meet with you and have you come in. But for the most part, this is where we wanna tell you what we're working on, what we're doing, and then you all provide feedback to make it better. I appreciate that feedback. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, uh, and if you see specific things that come up in the course of these meetings that you, you know, that you have strong thoughts on, like I'm, I'm definitely open to them. Um, I'm not trying to, yeah, but push you, push your, you know, I, I, I could tell you're like extremely capable person. And I want to take advantage of that, but I'm just uh, trying to figure out how to do that effectively. And, and also, um, you know, to make sure that we're uh, prioritizing library operations the way that makes sense. Um, there's like, like Christina said, it, we're in a crazy state right now where we just reopened. I, I mean, this is the first time we've been open to the public since I've come on board. So there's a, a lot that we're trying to figure out right now. Um, so I, I appreciate your willingness and I think um, there will be opportunities to take advantage of it, but I don't have anything right now. That, that I think we're all here to help however you need and also to not be in your way when sometimes we can be. So please <laughs> raise that flag to be like, give me a month for the love of God. But, uh, <laughs> appreciate that. I'll go, yeah. well, okay, yeah. we get it. Cause you know, yeah. we see you an hour a month and you have to live this every day, so. Well. And like you said, you don't mean to push, but I, you know, sometimes that push can be a healthy thing. So thank you for that. I have a general question. Yeah, um, Brent. Yeah, being new, um, I, I've heard a lot about the library newsletter, um, but doing like a general search on like the library site and the Facebook site, like there's no like sign up here for a newsletter or like, you know, any way for, I guess, like new patrons to potentially like receive that newsletter. Yeah, um, we so that's such a funny thing. We've been having this conversation internally. Um, we originally pulled our, our list uh, by scraping our um, registrants in our ILS. Uh, so anybody who has signed up for a library card and provided an email address, that became the basis of uh, our, our newsletter list. Um, going forward, um, we, we're, we're reaching out to uh, Marmot, who runs uh it's the consortium we're part of. They 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 do development and maintenance on Pika, which is our catalog system. So when you register, uh, we'll have a radio button that will allow you to opt in to that newsletter. Because currently the plan is just to scrape the ILS periodically, um, and we know not everybody wants to opt in. And of course, we use um, we're currently using Myama as the um, the platform for that. Um, and it does you know anytime you're you do something like this, you're legally required to um, give people the ability to opt out easily. Um, but we would prefer to be able to do that up front and not just and not start sending these letters to people who don't who never want to get them in the first place. Um, and so similarly, if somebody comes into the library and registers for a library card, 
um, we're, we're going to um, ask them if they want to register once we have the ability to uh, <laughs> to not just scrape, you know, not just catch them in the catch all um, uh, when we pull all the emails of say people who've registered in the last three months. Um, so we got to figure out how to toggle that in the ILS so that we're not just grabbing everybody that we're only grabbing the people who opt in. So we're working on it, but I, but I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. And in, yeah. And in the meantime, it might, it, yeah, it probably makes sense to just have somewhere on the website that says, Hey, if you want to get the newsletter and you're not currently getting it, you can sign up here. I think that's a really good thing to like push every so often on the Facebook page too. Just like, yeah. What's that link? I, I don't get the newsletter. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen it. Hey, cool. probably going in your spam folder. I don't see it in the spam. I don't, I don't know. Huh. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder why you're not on there. That's interesting. Yeah, it was really just. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll look you up, guy. I'm gonna look you up later. <laughs> yeah. Let me know. Maybe I could. All right. Could be. My email is a mess. So. All right. What's next? Okay, wait, can I ask one more question? I'm so sorry, sure. I have all these questions about this stuff. I'm loving all the digital stuff I'm seeing too in the metrics that you pulled out, but then also in the action plan. But I have a question about gaming technology. What is the gaming technology uh, that you're referring to? Uh, well, right, so um, where was that? Was that in the Teams it's area? It's a little higher, it's part of the action plan. It's in red um, above theme DVDs. Hmm. I know the, the so uh, I know it's mentioned in the children's one. It, it we, we have um yeah we got we got a new projector for the teen space and Nintendo Switch. I think we'll probably get one of the other one of the other consoles as well. Um, and then the computers that are going to go into the teen space are going to be um little uh, have uh, greater you know graphics processing capabilities than our normal library computers. Um, and then we're also that's so that's digital. Um, we're talking about um, adding uh, video games like uh, disc-based games to um, the physical collection to try circulating those. Um, so like, you know, Xbox, PlayStation 5, that sort of thing. Uh, probably, probably go back to like some of the older generations of consoles as well for people who don't have the new stuff. Um, just starting with the seed collection. So a couple of dozen titles to start. Um, Interesting. So it's actually going to be game content uh, in the circulation. Yeah, we're going to try it. The challenge with doing that um, is high theft rates. So we're going to be careful to keep the um, uh, items behind the counter or keep the, the discs themselves behind the counter. Um, and so we'll, we'll see. Um, some libraries do this really successfully. Some try it and give up on it due, due to uh, lack of interest and, or in some cases too much interest and it turns into a high theft rate. Um, so it's something that we're interested in. Um, we're also um, looking to start lending. We have a board game collection that's always been used just, you know, it's just for people who come into the library to sit and play. Uh, you know, some more traditional type board games and some of the more like uh, European style, the more modern stuff. Um, and uh, we're going to start trying to lend those as well. Um, so that, 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 that tricky thing there is, and this is not giving technology anymore, this is off in a different direction, but one of our staff members is really passionate about it. And I was talking to him just the other day, um, you know, figuring out how to inventory everything. You know, when you're talking about games that have lots of, lots of little bits, and do we need to go through and count every, you know, little marker or disc that comes with a game? Um, uh, and so we'll, we'll give it a shot. But that, that, those are the kind of things we're doing. Um, I don't know if with, in the team space with the you know, projector and the gaming, uh, the console type gaming equipment, whether that's something that we will uh, have available at all times. Um, I've you know, set, when I was working at the South Bend Library, back in the day, we set this up in a um, locking cabinet and people would you know, give their library card and then we'd give them a controller and unlock the cabinet for them. Um, it was a little clunky. Um, we've done, you know, we, could, we might try doing after hours gaming programs for our teens, that sort of thing. Um, we'll, we'll experiment with a few different things, I think. Um, I'm interested in the game, so I look forward to more game updates as to cool. how all that right. stuff's working yeah. out. Great. Uh, 
All right, we have new business. From Director Underhill. Yeah, this will be less than three minutes probably, but um, for now we're staying virtual and uh, uh, Councilman requested, do you hear back from legal at all? You bet. Yeah, actually, we had this conversation. Uh, it was actually it was at a council meeting at, at the end of every other meeting. Uh, members give updates on the various boards and commissions they're on. I raised this issue. Thank you, Guy, for sending over the official request. And the city attorney weighed in that it is um, at the will of each board and, and commission and their members how they'd like to proceed. Um, so, if, I mean, if you guys want to go fully remote, that would certainly be uh, your prerogative, if you want to do it, I believe you mentioned maybe quarterly or, or you know, whatever was was proposed. Uh, that would certainly be at the will of the members. Uh, so however you guys would like to proceed is, is certainly, uh, uh, it, it's unto you to make that decision. Great, thank you, Councilman. You bet, and, and I guess just one more note, there were other boards that were kicking this around as well. Uh, it wasn't just library. So I, I think had you not raised the issue, another board or commission would. So. Um, you know, re regardless about how you guys proceed, if you were to go remote full time or, or for, you know, occasional meetings, uh, I, I doubt you'll be the only ones doing it. Certainly convenient when it's this uh, late in the evening. <laughs> you bet. What if we had just one annual in person meeting and we made it a formal prom theme? <laughs> <laughs> We could have a prom. I didn't go to my prom, so yeah. That, that, me either. This is where it's coming from. The idea has a root. <laughs> I um in-person meetings someday, but not yet. <laughs> yeah, I actually would yeah. like to when we when everyone feels safe. I would really prefer to go back to in-person. I find this format to be good enough, and it works well for now. I don't want I don't want to go back until everyone feels comfortable, but. I really dislike meeting online. I don't know if I'm the only one who's like that. I can't oh, get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I can't even meet with my family online. Well, I can, <laughs> but I'm like, they're like, "Come on, it's Christmas," and I'm like, "Ugh, can I just see you <laughs> next year?" So I just want. I was just hoping we could talk about that a little more, or just put it off for later about future meetings. I think we'll definitely have to meet in in person on occasion. Uh, so we have to want to see things in the library too when, when things change. We're going to want to see the recording studio, um, et cetera. I guess so. it, maybe it would be good to hear everyone's input on it. Um, I don't like remote at all though. I find it very difficult to communicate in this way. Mm -hmm. I, I miss in-person meetings. I mean, I'm, I'm cautious certainly and I'm, and I'm uh, staying home a lot until I get a vaccine, definitely. Um, but I wonder if it might be a good idea to pick a meeting a few months out to to have this on the agenda. And and uh, after you know after the vaccine has been around for a while and and uh, summer comes um, and uh, and maybe set it for I don't know discussion in July or something to. Uh, see where we stand. Yeah, that, why don't we talk about it in April or May about the meeting uh, in June? I agree. Sorry, did I interrupt everybody? I think anybody else in their comments? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like April or May might be too soon, but. Um... Oh, to, we'll put it on the agenda to plan a in-person meeting. Yeah. So, cause I, it's not gonna be next month, right? So. No. I'm good. All right. Um, Library reopening. We talked about that. Yeah, we talked about that. I'll just add to the previous discussion that I really look forward to meeting you all one day. It's a very strange thing to, to <laughs> feel like I've gotten to know you all over the previous months and only a handful of you did I ever meet in person. Um, but anyway, um, library reopening, I think we've mostly talked about that. Um, if you have any questions, though, I'd be happy to answer them. Next time I come pick up books, I can ask for you and complain about staff or something if you want. Please, yeah. 
<laughs> Complain about me, not the staff. Come on. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I actually got into an argument with one, one guy when I was picking up books not too long ago. Yes. No way. All right, we'll have to talk about that some, somewhere <laughs> other than here. <laughs> my fault. But it was just hilarious. Is um, there um, like a plan for, you know, extending the hours of like operation just based on current COVID um, precautions? Yeah, I mean, um, hours, so restoring normal hours is one of our, you know, obvious near term goals. Um, right now, the reluctance to do so has to do with making sure that we have adequate staffing to enforce different gui health guidelines. Um, we're probably now that we're back in yellow, it's one of those conversations that's on the table. Um, so nothing to announce yet, but it's definitely something we're thinking about. Cool. Yeah. And I'm trying to have as few steps between where we're at now and where we'll be when we get back to the sort of normal 930 to 730, you know, on Mondays through Thursdays. Um, I don't want to have too many intermediary like, oh, and now the hours are this and now the hours are this. Like, I think we've we've certainly confused our staff enough over the last few months and, 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 our, and our public as well. So uh, we'll, we'll have, we'll be moving in that direction, but we'll be making big jumps in that direction rather than small steps. I think consistency will be key for keeping the public happy and keeping exactly. the public yeah. from being unhappy with your staff by jumping around many hours. So That's I appreciate, exactly appreciate it. that yeah. vision. <laughs> Any other uh, staff's choice? Yeah, um, staff, go ahead, because you know, you, yeah. Okay, I just have two things. Just a reminder for low day is Friday. So library will be closed along with the rec centers and city services. Police will be open obviously and South Platte and all that, but um, the civic <laughs> center will be closed. And then um, the other only item I have, and Debbie will send this out to you so you have it, but we do have the Inglewood drive through extravagan egg extravaganza coming up. It's our egg hunt, but it won't be an egg hunt. It'll be a drive through egg hunt. Uh, it'll be fun. It's $5 per car. Registration is required. So when you get the flyer, all that information is on there. Um, we found last year when we did these events, because you have to register for it and save your spot, it filled up fairly quickly. So if you're thinking about it, I'd say register for it as soon as you can, but it's ages 14 and under. It'll be at Pirates Cove parking lot. So you drive through the parking lot there. There'll be multiple uh, booths set up so you can collect as you drive through. We'll hand you the items as you pass by slowly, hopefully. Um, and we have <laughs> six time slots starting at nine, the half an hour time slots and going until noon. So again, it's Pirates Cove. It's extravaganza on Saturday, March 27th. That's all I have. It's good seeing you all. Any yeah, school board seeing you. Uh, news, Jen, or you know, not really. Um, we're everybody's kind of doing their thing. We've been in school about a month um, since Christmas break, and um, we're having quarantines and rolling remote, and you know, where the where there's positive cases, and so a whole class goes out or a whole grade goes out. I think we closed the school for a couple of days to try and do a deep clean because we kept having, you know, folks get sick and, you know, stuff like that. So right now we're just trying to keep everybody healthy enough to stay in school. Um, although it seems, you know, there's a, there seems to be a case almost every day of, you know, in, in one school or another. So, um, but we are trying to keep it, keep the quarantines and, and things like that as small as possible. So it's not a whole school that goes down. Typically it's, you know, Miss So-and-So's kindergarten class and, you know, the seventh grade, you know, math class or, you know, something like that. So that they are trying to do as much contact tracing as possible, but really, I mean, the contact tracing alone is taking hours, you know, I mean, it just, it, it's a, it's a huge thing for our principals and our staff to do. Um, so that's really all we can, <laughs> really all we can, we can focus on and do right now. Are, are there any changes actually with, I don't know, library too, um, or the school because of the new variants? Are there are things? You know? No, everything is the same. I mean, we, um, we gave parents the option to choose online education for their student. Um, there are periods of time where they can kind of choose to change their mind, essentially. So it wasn't, you know, you pick one thing for the whole year and you stay there. Um, 
you know, we, we tried to, to give parents and students the option to change, to change modalities, so to speak. So to go online, you know, to online from in person or in person from online, um, usually at like grading periods. So like semester, um, I think some, I think our elementaries are at quarters. So you have to go through a quarter before you can say, okay, I want to come back in person or no, I want to go, go to online. Um, just because if we kind of had a free for all, um, it would just be a constant flow of in and out and, and, you know, the online kids are, you know, the, the program that they're using is different than obviously what the, the kids in person are using. And so just to try and keep some consistency, but, um, we've been, you know, open five days a week, you know, with whoever has chosen the in-person option, um, pretty much since August, we had two months, we, pretty much all of November and December, we were closed because the cases spiked so high. Um, but when, since we came back, um, I think they went back in person the 11th of January. And so people have been in person and things like that. Um, I think the big thing is that we have a significant portion of our students that are choosing to do e-learning. So the social distancing and things like that is a lot easier because there's just less kids in the building. Um, but, um, you know, the, from everything that I'm hearing, schools are considered an essential business, um, which means we don't, you know, necessarily have to follow those COVID dial capacity rules and, you know, things like that, as far as, you know, 50% of your staff or, you know, 25% of your staff, um, just because they are trying to keep kids in school and, and um, learning and all that kind of stuff. Great. Councilman Cuesta, any other, other city council? Uh, I don't have any, uh, you know, nothing that really comes to mind that would, would immediately impact this group. I would, Jen, I would like to thank you. I know you just described schools as essential businesses, and and I see you as so much more critical than, than you know, an essential business, although there's so many of those out there. So I appreciate what you guys are doing. Council is wrestling as well with when do we go back, um, and we're kind of doing, I guess, what this board is going to do. You know, we're just going to weigh the votes of the members, and, and when we can get to four of seven, we'll move back. But then there's also an additional component that just because council is comfortable going back, there, there's certainly citizens that won't be. And so how do we keep the option for um, remote public comment and folks being able to view, et cetera. So we might have to do some tech upgrades, but you know, I mean, I think that everybody in this, in this Zoom meeting right now has some sort of story of how they're kind of trying to still wrestle with this. Uh, even as I've, I'm feeling like there's some light at the end of the tunnel might still be a, a, a pinhole, but but it feels like we're, we're so, well, I don't even want to speak too soon, but it feels like maybe there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel and and we're still working through it as I know everybody else is. So, uh, you know, I, Jen, credit to you and, and all the folks that are doing this in education and healthcare. And I'm, I'm sure every single person in this meeting is helps people out in, in ways that, that are hard to even measure. So uh, I'm grateful. And again, I, I think that, I think that slowly but surely we're getting there. So that wasn't much, but thank you, guy. I, I don't have a great deal of an update uh, this this meeting. Just like to get, like to give you a chance. To... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's appreciated. Uh, I guess uh, board members' choice. Um, people actually came to my little free library and even dropped off books that were on my daughter's wish list, oddly, which is hilarious to me. Uh, so if anybody needs any uh, little fairy books, come by because somebody threw a whole lot of them in there. Uh, and Thomas plus. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, come on by. <laughs> uh, any other board members have any personal oh, stories? I was. <laughs> oh, I go, who said that? Use... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to use my time to give a shout out to Englewood Schools too. I actually um, moved my do my teen daughter from Littleton to Englewood, and it's. A really good fit for her really happy with the school she she's happier her she said her first day was better than any day the entire first semester at Littleton she made friends she likes her classes and she's playing basketball and um and she was so happy that her little sister who was has been homeschooling for the past three and a half years I'm afraid to even say this so I'm afraid I'll jinx it but she decided she wanted to go to school so now she's at she's an elementary <laughs> oh, cool. and really happy and really happy with the school 
And I feel like I looked at all those ratings all these years about schools and I wanna just throw all of that in the trash. Um, and I've, I've started coming up with rating schools with ice cream <laughs> flavors instead. <laughs> And Littleton is a vanilla ice cream cone. It's like perfect. Everyone kind of likes it. Inglewood High School is a, the party tub that you get from King Cooper <laughs> for like $5, like three gallons of ice cream. And yeah, and I'm really happy with the elementary school. I don't know how, that one's like a cookie sandwich or something. <laughs> but I'm really, um, just really impressed too that Inglewood is the lead, taking the lead in all of Denver Metro and getting kids back in school and taking their mental health seriously. And um, it's really important. And I'm just really happy with that. So I wanted to give them a shout out. Scott, you look like you have a, you have a story. Oh, it's, well, it's just funny. I was on the phone the other day with a guy, a really wealthy guy from Douglas County. And he was complaining about their schools uh, postponing uh, the return. And I said, well, I, I live in Englewood. And he goes, I'm really envious of you people in Englewood. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's a, that's a switch. <laughs> like, okay, I'll take that. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm happy to see the 15th annual Englewood art exhibit um, coming back on starting March 10th. I miss the, uh, the art shows in the library and I hope we can, I look forward to being able to do those on the like basically a quarterly basis like we were doing. That's it for me. Good to see everybody. Andy, Austin. I have nothing. I'm me, very boring. How do you like the, um, how do you like the library board, Bryn? <laughs> Say that again, sorry. How do you like the library board, Bryn? Loving it so far. All of All two, right. two meetings, but yeah, <laughs> trying to learn. <laughs> Okay. Anyone else? For me, not a lot of personal stories. Um, I have thought a lot recently, though, and I might shoot Jen an email. Um, I was kind of curious for people that are opting into, you know, at home schooling or that are using some of the e services that the library provides. I was curious out of all of those, how many are like, uh, same time participation, whether that be physical or follow along with, you know, this drawing or painting um, and we're like participatory. Um, and then obviously I'm a martial artist. So I was wondering how many in general were, I was like, is there any physical education now for at home students, you know, or like you just get to choose not to do your 60 minutes a day, you know, so. That's no, I know there's there's PE yes. and art and music all virtual. <laughs> um, you know, they've the teachers have really done as much as they can to try and make things as normal for the kids that have chosen that e-learning option. Right. Um, uh, the other thing, it it is some of it is 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 tough. Um, the other um, piece of it is that with the online students, there is a what they call synchronous uh, period, like time so that it's not just here, watch this video or, you know, here's your list of assignments for today and you never actually get FaceTime with a teacher. Um, there are routine, regular times where they're seeing teachers live and having lessons live or, you know, having a chance to answer questions and, um, you know, that sort of a thing. So it's, it looks very different now than it did in the spring when we had to flip on a dime um, to, to try and, to try and switch to online education. Over so, yeah. yeah, so we, you know, the teachers are getting more comfortable and, and so, yeah, there is, it's a mix of synchronous and asynchronous, but they do get time, FaceTime with teachers every day, live FaceTime. Good. Anyone else? Very good. I think we can adjourn and thank all right. you all. We'll see you next month. Sure. Take care, everybody. Oh, Good seeing you. Hey guys, see you next month. Guy. What? Seven o'clock was fine on my end. So. Is it, okay, want to go with this? Because it, yeah, it worked well for me. <laughs> so, great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>